Throughout the course of this year, I have faced many obstacles and have consolidated my strengths and weaknesses. Walking into my practicum school for the first time, I realised it was a melting pot of hormones, social cliques, stereotypes and popular culture. What had I got myself into? How was I to relate to these Pokemon-obsessed teenagers? Would I be able to breathe and survive in an air pungent of rebellion and anti-authority? What I learnt is that good teaching practice requires a strong backbone for support. Every experience I have had this year is the calcium that makes it stronger. Walking into my grade A English class for the first time, I knew I had walked into the arena of my prime time battle. The class was as diverse as they come. Students reading at a year two level matched with students who could easily write a year 11 English exam. Students from refugee backgrounds to indig indigenous students. What all the students did have in common was their strong dislike for poetry. I strongly believe that building positive relationships with students is imperative in being able to teach successfully. If you don't have rapport, you've got nothing. So how was I going to build this foundation? One way I instantly built connections with the girls in the class was through fashion. I never wore the same outfit twice. They would eagerly wait to see what I would wear each day and would then proceed with comments about the outfit. Winner. I included anecdotes and many lessons that were humorous for a 13 year old crowd. I took man buns and footy with the boys. Short conversations getting to know the students was essential in fostering a positive learning environment. Moreover, I created a seating plan and put specific students in certain groups when working collaboratively to differentiate. I looked at their previous English results to better gauge what level the class was at. Once I knew more about them, I had to rethink the content of each lesson. It was an Australian poetry unit and they had just started looking at My Country by Dorothy McKellar. They weren't loving it. I had to mix it up. I decided that each week we would look at a different aspect of Australian culture. One lesson a pre-teach, the next a distribution of the poem and a discussion, and the third analysis. Instead of analysing poems, I selected a few songs to further engage students. I chose aspects of Australian culture that I thought would interest them. Sport, the Aussie bloke, beach, multiculturalism and Indigenous culture. Students engaged with this content because it was relevant to them. I tried to make poetry as palatable as possible. Of course there were lessons when students misbehaved, were disruptive and in some lessons culturally insensitive. Reflecting now, these moments were opportunities to practice my behaviour management skill and refine my teaching practice. Above all, although the content, sequencing, behaviour management and the myriad of skills and theories university has implanted in my head, I learned that the most important and fundamental skill of building rapport and what a vital role it plays in supporting the vertebrae of professional knowledge. After I had established rapport with my class, I wanted every student to feel a sense of belonging and to feel that they were respected in my class. Having travelled extensively throughout my time at uni, I have grown a strong appreciation for diverse culture. I have highly valued the richness some cultures hold and I love to share my passion for diversity with my classes. Although as a teacher I cannot control what happens at lunchtime or in cyberspace, I can change how students treat one another in my classroom. By including poems from students' cultural backgrounds such as Indigenous Australia and Vietnam, I created an opportunity for students to discuss their culture and to be an expert in what we were discussing. I was able to provide feedback on students' progression throughout the term by checking work while circulating the room. I believe that consistent feedback enables students to take ownership of their learning. I gave constructive feedback on drafts and marked their final exam at the end of the term. I gained invaluable experience in reading and understanding the criteria matrix and used my best judgments to grade honestly and fairly. Professional practice is another essential skill that compri comprises the backbone for teaching practice. Whether it is students feeling, as as feeling safe and supported or assessing student work, these skills aligned with the code of ethics are fundamental to my teaching practice. The top end of the backbone is one that assists in the constant evolution of teaching practice through collaboration with mentors, colleagues and parents. 
During my 15 weeks on PRAC, I was able to participate in several PDs that provided me with strategies and knowledge I used in my English classroom. The eight essential skills in classroom management was a fantastic PD which I used in all my English classes from 8 to 12. I attended PDs on ICT, behaviour management, public speaking and effective time management. These skills transferred into my English classroom and I believe helped make me a better teacher from a pedagogical perspective. I also worked with, with senior teachers to plan units of work and sequencing of lessons and assessment pieces. These collegial, collegial opportunities allowed me to learn from senior educators and further understand the English curriculum and most productive sequencing of lessons. I enjoyed working with others in my staff room and thoroughly appreciated their time, support and friendship. Their advice was invaluable to my development of my teaching practice. My practicum experience this year has strengthened my backbone to support my developing teaching practice. The three sections of the spine, professional engagement, professional practice and professional knowledge, work together to create a strong and stable backbone. I know in the years to come, the conditioning my spine has endured this year has made it stronger and will support me in my journey as a graduate English teacher.